lines like this in just about every application we have, right? Because every application we have is going to have a layout. And that layout gets brought to life. And those objects get created. All right? Through our program, though, we have to point to, we have to use those objects. And therefore, we have to find them on the view, and we have to tell the compiler and the Java virtual machine, hey, this is this kind of object, so treat it that way. What if, for example, I did this? here. I'm going to say, let's take this and put it in a seek bar. It's not allowing me to do that, right? Why is it not allowing me to do that? It's not allowing me to do that because you can't take something, treat it like an edit text, and stuff it in a seek bar variable. Let's try this now. What if I were to say, find the thing on the page that's called custom seek bar. Notice it didn't give me an error for that. Why did it not give me an error for that? Isn't this kind of the same thing we were trying to do a minute ago? This line, I've said tip 10 edit text, which I declared as an edit text, equals find the thing on the page that has this ID, custom seek bar, and oh yes, that's an edit text field. Well, that isn't an edit text field, that's a seek bar. So why doesn't it show me an error? Well, more so than not compiled yet, this is the only kind of error, this is a kind of error that can only be detected at runtime. In other words, the compiler has no idea what that ID points to. It's taking our word for it. It's taking our word that it is an edit text object. All right? Only when we run it and the compiler is surprised to see that it's not an edit text view, then it will give you a runtime error. It will give you an illegal cast because you can't treat a text or you can't treat a seek bar like a like a like a edit text. So let's go and run this. And it should compile clean. All right, it compiled clean and it's running. Oh, I gotta plug this thing in again. All right. So it compiled clean. I didn't get a compile error, but you can might imagine this is not going to end well. And we get a message that says, oh, I disappeared, but it said, unfortunately, uh, tip calculator stopped. Right, I must have bumped it and closed it or whatever, or maybe it just stayed up for a second. Why did it do that? Because at compile time, it doesn't know that that's not a C bar. Or, I'm sorry, it doesn't know that it's not an edit text. Only when you run it and you try to actually do it. Because at this point, I could have an edit text control that I called custom seek bar. Doesn't know that. Only when I try to run it. The point is that, again, in Java, just like in any programming language, there's two kinds of errors. There's a compile error, and then there are runtime errors. 
The compiler is where you violated the rules of the language. In other words, the first time it knew that that wasn't right because I can't take a text bar or a text area, an edit text area, and put it into a seek bar. So it knows it couldn't do that. So it gave me an error. This kind of error, though, it doesn't know until it runs it. These are the typically harder ones to find, especially if they're situational. In other words, they don't happen all the time. Compiler errors are actually, you should be happy to get those, right? Because that tells you you've done something wrong and it won't let you proceed otherwise. Here, however, I got a clean compile and yet it still blew up. And again, in this case, it's still pretty straightforward what the problem is. In other cases, if it's situational, it might not be so easy to detect that. All right? Let's go and make this right again by putting in the proper ID. why you've gotten, or why I got, the compile error in one case and the runtime error in another case. All right. It's important for you to understand like why we have these lines of code in here because these are going to be in all of them. Essentially, the idea is that we have this layout in our XML file that we create and it creates those objects. We need to be able to point to those objects to do anything with them. How do we point to them? Well, we use the find view by ID to find them on our screen and point to them. And then we cast it to whatever specific kind of view it is so that we can go and we can do stuff with it. We can program it and we can grab the value or set the value or whatever. All of this from here to here effectively does that. We are pointing to the different text views and edit text views that are on the page. All right. Here, we do sort of the same thing with the seek bar. We don't declare an instance variable for it, but we do essentially the same thing for the seek bar. We said we have a seek bar called custom seek bar. What is it? Well, find a thing on the page that has an ID of custom seek bar, and oh yeah, treat it like a seek bar. So this line falls into that category as well. These two lines, this line and this line, are what connect those controls to our processing language, uh, or processing uh, code. So for example, now that I've corrected the error that we had a minute ago, let me go and run this again. has to know that when I type in an amount here, oops, that there's some calculating that needs done. All right? I have to create that sort of event-driven process of the event is I type something in here, and therefore I want some calculation being to, to be done. Likewise, I need to code something so that when I slide this, there's some other kinds of calculation that are being done. So I have to sort of associate events on the views on this with some code. And that's what these two lines of code do.
This line of code adds something to the edit text for the bill that says, when the text changes, do this. This adds code to the seek bar that says, when the seek bar changes, do this. All right? All of this happens on the create uh, method of this activity. We set the view, which again, inflates the, the GUI, the layout, and brings it to life and creates all those objects. We restore the state of that application. We get pointers to all the different things that we need to point to that our code will need. And then finally we associate certain events on those controls with our code so that when the user goes and changes the amount, the tip gets calculated. Or when the user slides the seat bar, this gets calculated. Next time we're going to view these two lines in more detail and look and see what those actually do. Right now it's enough to know that that's what connects the user event of typing something in to that text view or sliding the slide bar. That's what connects that action to some code. When you're reviewing this, review these lines because these lines, again, will be, these lines and lines like it will be in, in just about everything we do. In fact, this onCreate method, we're going to have something very similar to that in all of them. Because in all of them, we need to bring the screen to life, we need to point to the different things on the screen, and then we need to associate different events related to those objects on the screen with some of our code. So we need to create listeners for that. So we'll pick up next time looking at the listeners and looking how we define those, and we'll look at the code that's contained there. Any questions at this point?